SpaceX has carried out a historic mission this week by launching the first crewed spacecraft into polar orbit, flying over both the North and South Poles of Earth while people were on board for the very first time. This was a private mission called From 2 that was funded entirely by Bitcoin, which is interesting in and of itself for being an acceptable form of payment to SpaceX. Several firsts were carried out on this mission. So let's discover why this polar joyride is actually important and will affect human spaceflight in the future. The mission was funded entirely by mission commander Chun Wang, an early Bitcoin investor originally from China but currently a citizen of Malta. The all-civilian crew includes Norwegian cinematographer Janneke Mikkelsen as vehicle commander, who is also the first female Norwegian astronaut. Congratulations! Also on board is Australian polar explorer Eric Phillips as mission specialist and medical officer. Although he's not the first Australian-born astronaut, he is the first to fly under the Australian flag instead of another nation like the United States. Finally, the last crew member is German robotics engineer Rabia Roga as pilot and is also the first female German astronaut to fly into space. This quartet of spaceflight rookies, each with deep ties to polar exploration on Earth, embarked on a journey that no human has undertaken before. So what does From 2 even mean? Apparently Chun Wang wanted to call this mission Polaris, but that name was taken already, so they decided on From 2, which is named after and is the successor to the Norwegian polar exploration ship From the first ship to complete expeditions to both the North Pole and South Pole between 1893 and 1912. This ship still exists, actually, and is in a museum in Oslo, Norway. To emphasize the reference to this ship, the crew carried a piece of teak wood from the ship's deck into space. That's pretty incredible. For Fram 2, it's all about its trajectory. That's its defining feature. Unlike the equatorial or mid-inclination orbits of the International Space Station or most prior crewed flights, FROM-2 achieved a 90-degree inclination, tracing a path that looped over both poles. This polar orbit, a first for human spaceflight, required a southbound launch from Florida, which is a departure from the typical eastward trajectories that leverage Earth's rotation for fuel efficiency. With an apogee of 413 kilometers and a perigee of 202 kilometers, their spaceship, Crew Dragon Resilience, offered its occupants unprecedented views of Earth's icy extremes, regions that are normally invisible to astronauts aboard the International Space Station. The views were especially good because they got to use SpaceX's cupola, previously used on the Inspiration4 mission to get the best views. Before liftoff, Chun Wang shared this video of a perspective that we don't usually get to see when they close the hatch of Dragon before launch, which was really nice to see it from this perspective. The mission unfolded flawlessly, launching from Cape Canaveral on March 31, 2025. They had a perfect liftoff and a precise placement into the orbit that they planned. Over the next few days, the crew conducted scientific experiments, captured breathtaking imagery, and tested technologies that could shape the future of space travel. We certainly got some amazing views, and I'm really hopeful that we get to see some of the images that Yannicka took with what looks like special cameras and lenses. Luckily for us, Chun Wang shared lots of video taken from his iPhone and shared via Starlink, and it was really nice to see their perspective looking out of the cupola. <laughs> I especially liked this shot where he decided to go feet first. <laughs> Honestly, I'm a bit envious of the amount of fun that these private astronauts seem to be having. Although apparently, on the first day, all four crew members got motion sickness and needed a little bit more time to adjust. By the second day, though, the nausea was gone and they could enjoy the meals they brought with them and conduct the experiments that they had planned. The crew performed an experiment to grow oyster mushrooms in space, a first that could pave the way for sustainable food production on long-duration missions to Mars. They're actually really easy to grow. They also took the first X-ray in space with a compact device and offered insights into bone density changes in microgravity, which is vital for future lunar or Martian explorers, and in my opinion should be a standard piece of equipment for long-duration missions, even if it's just to the ISS. They also wanted to study aurora-like phenomenon, leveraging the polar orbit's unique perspective, However, I haven't seen any images or video of auroras that they saw. 
I really hope that they weren't unlucky and didn't see any at all. Maybe they just haven't shared those images since it's part of a study that they wanted to do, but it would be really disappointing if that just happened to be no visible auroras during their time in space. Hopefully that's not the case. Regardless of the auroras, Fram 2's significance transcends its status as the first polar orbital crew mission. It matters for three key reasons, each with profound implications for the future. First, it expands on the envelope of human spaceflight. Polar orbits have been the domain of satellites, not people, due to the technical challenges. It's got higher fuel demands, it's got increased radiation exposure at the poles where Earth's magnetic field offers less shielding, and communication gaps with ground stations optimized for mid-latitudes. Fram 2's success proves that these hurdles can be overcome. And thanks to SpaceX's reusable Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon's robust design, this opens up new trajectories for crewed missions, which almost every launch pad on Earth can reach, and potentially could be used to stage high-inclination launches for lunar or even interplanetary travel. The second reason that this is important is because it advances the privatization of space. As the sixth private human spaceflight mission that SpaceX has carried out, Fram 2 exemplifies the maturity of commercial spaceflight. Chun Wang's self-funded venture, costing an estimated $55 million per seat, demonstrates that private individuals can design bespoke missions, something that people like Jared Isaacman of Inspiration4 and Polaris Dawn have already proven. This shows that Jared's flights weren't a one-off thing. This shift could accelerate innovation as diverse actors from all over bring fresh priorities to orbit, from scientific research to cultural outreach. And the third reason why Fram 2 is important is because it lays the groundwork for long-term exploration. The experiments aboard Fram 2, the mushroom cultivation, the x-rays, the motion sickness studies, they all address practical challenges for extended spaceflight. As humanity is eyeing the moon and Mars, understanding how to sustain life and health in space is paramount. Communication is also key and testing out Starlink system offered data for future networks that could connect distant outposts beyond the Earth. Although a short mission, Fram 2 still took a bold step and it echoes the exploratory zeal of the ship that it was named after, pushing the boundaries that once seemed unreachable. After a little over three days, Fram 2 performed their deorbit burn, and thanks to Chun, we got to see the crew's perspective of that, thanks to his iPhone videos. After the deorbit burn, they re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, slowing down, and deployed their parachutes before splashdown in the Pacific Ocean. The video views that SpaceX got during parachute deployment were excellent, and it's really incredible to see it up close like this. The splashdown was actually another first. It was the first time that a Crew Dragon spacecraft has been recovered in the Pacific Ocean off of the coast of California. This opens up even more opportunities for SpaceX to recover Dragon from both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, which hopefully means less delays due to bad weather for crews returning from space. As the Resilience capsule was recovered today on April 4th, 2025, its crew performed one last first by emerging from their capsule unassisted. Well, mostly unassisted. And all four of them were able to walk around without difficulty. Congratulations to the crew members of Fram 2 and to everyone at SpaceX who worked diligently to make this mission happen. As for Spaceflight's future, Fram 2 signals a world where orbits are no longer confined to equatorial planes, where civilians rival astronauts, and where the lessons of a short polar jaunt inform future voyages to the stars. In the words of Chun Wang, it's about pushing boundaries, sharing knowledge, and inspiring others to do the same. This week, Fram 2 did just that, and the cosmos feel a little bit closer for it. Keep moving onwards and upwards, everybody. And don't forget, Ad Astra, to the stars.